Okay, here is the next version prototype of the spin pan. The difference of this one is basically the legs here on the outer edge of the screen. Everything else is the same. I did tweak the spacer in the middle, modify that a little bit, and the bracket is still the same temporary bracket. I ran out of time before coming here to make the new bracket, but I did finally come up with a design for the bracket. I'm just gonna use quarter inch aluminum plate because it's easy to make the bracket. I only have to get a CNC machine to cut out the shape, drill a hole, and that'll be done. Yeah, anyway, so the purpose of this video is going to be to show you how fast it is, and I'm also gonna show you a second way to use this. So the first way is gonna be with the screen, and I'm shoveling it on there like in the last video, shoveling it on there, shaking it, spinning it, and get another shovel, and just repeating that so I can see how fast it is. Yeah. And then after that, I'm gonna take the screen off and we're gonna use it without the screen. I, I got a, a separate screen here for the five gallon buckets, just a quarter inch. And then I'll show you the other way to use it where it's a continuous operation. So you can really speed through uh, the material when a continuous operation. So I'll show you how that works. So stay tuned, because it's gonna be awesome. Okay, here we go. I don't know, let's do uh, 10 shovelfuls. And all the oversize has all been spun out too, so it self-cleans as you spin it, all the oversized material gets, also gets flung out. And it's at a shallower slope, so it'll want to get flung out easier than the stuff in the spin pan. Yeah, so I'll show you. You see that? That's what it looks like down in there. Okay. Now, I finally got a wing nut for this one. <laughs> Just easy to take off. I got a little orange tape on there in case I drop it in the water and find it easier. Okay, so I'll just put that down there. And what I gotta do is the, the well, I'll show you, but the legs that go from the screen into the spin pan, they're a little tight. It's a tight fit. But that's it easy improvement to do in the next version. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just do it so you guys can see what I'm doing. So I'll take this off, and that space is still in there so I'm not losing any material. And then I'll just put my regular pan underneath, and then I pull this spacer out, and then everything falls through the hole. And then, you just gotta go with this. Doesn't take long. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, for a river that doesn't have a whole lot of gold in it, it's pretty good. There you go. Look at all that gold. Try and clean it up better here for you. There's a little better. That's not all the gold. I kind of missed some, but some in the bottom of the pan. There you go. See, look how fine that gold is. It's so tiny. It's so tiny. Here. There's my thumb for scale. Or my finger, I should say. So it's some tiny, tiny gold. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is a proper test here. A test where we measure, or we or I'll put gold in, known gold in the bucket, and, and then we'll pan the tailings. Okay, let me just set this up here. Okay, so I'm just gonna pre-screen all this material Bunch of clay in that one. Oh, and some dark orangey looking dirt. Oh, 
Oh yeah, look at the clay. Yep, bunch of clay in there. Right on! Okay, so I got a, another specially designed spacer for using the spin pan without the screen. So it's just a shorter bolt. And then here is the other shape of the spacer, right there. And the reason I got this lip right here is so you can grab it when you want to pull it off. So it's easy to grab. There you go. That's that's what it looks like. And you just you can easily grab it and pull it off. Okay. I think you're ready to go. All right, I'm just gonna oh one other thing first. One other thing. I'll show you guys here. Okay. Was a lot of gold. Okay, so this gold is mostly from the last video, and that's it. I think I did 20, pan, 20 minutes of actual work, and the rest was filming. That was in the last video. And I'll put a link in the description for the last video if you want to see it. There, that was 20 minutes. Um, padding or spin padding. <laughs> spin padding in the last video. Okay, so what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dump it in here. Dig a big hole. Oh, it's nice and shiny looking in the sun. Oh, it looks good. Okay. Get in there. Oh, most of it went in. Get in there. Okay, so we know there's gold in there. Let's give it a little shake. Okay, here we go, watch this. Step on that. <laughs> there we go. See, there's a lot less in there now. I'll just spin a bit more. Try and get the water nice and calm. No, nope, not gonna work. Anyway, there we go. Okay, and then that came off easy. Is that float or is it sink? That sink's good. Let's put that over there. But I don't want to do it over there. Um, I'll do it over. So I'm going to be panning all of my tailings here to see if I missed any gold. So I'll just use this. Okay. Should be loaded with gold, man. Yeah, that black. Uh, five gallon classifier. Nice to be closer to half inch. It's more than quarter inch, that's for sure. Because the rocks in the pan are, are a lot bigger than if I used my own screen. Oh, I see tons of gold in there. 
Oh, you know, there's a lot when you can see gold already. Okay, I gotta get rid of these bigger pieces here. Don't like those bigger pieces in there. Oh, there it is. There it is. Now you know it's legit. I cut all my gold back. This here works and it works fast. Look at all that gold. Look at all that gold. Ooh, showing off my gold. And I found that in a probably oh, 20, 20 to 25 minutes and one bucket that I did. One bucket and then 10, 10 shovelfuls. So you got 20 minutes from the last video plus one five gallon um, classified five gallon bucket and about 10 shovelfuls from the beginning of this video. Yeah, there we go. Spinpan.com, and now I'll do my tailings, but yeah, spinpan.com, get on the email list, and I don't know what the price is gonna be, but I'm trying to get down as low as I can, that way people buy it. Um, and I'm not stuck with a whole bunch I can't sell, but I'm pretty sure they're all gonna sell because I just proven it worked, and it worked incredibly well. I like this pan the best, I like the color, that's why my spin pan is blue. I like how this has got the big riffles and it's got the little riffles. I really like that. That probably is some gold here because I kind of went through it pretty quick with the green pan. I went through it pretty quick with this one now too. <laughs> but I mean, this was all caught by the spin pan too. So if there's anything in here, it caught, it was caught by the spin pan. Oh yeah, there's tons. <laughs> Goes to show you how good my panning is. Hey, <laughs> oh my God. Well, I did rush it for the sake of the video. I don't want to bore you guys too much. There's a whole bunch in there. Not nearly as much. Probably got 95% of it the first time around, but there is some gold in there. Big reveal. Not, not a speck, not a speck. Okay, here we go. Make sure I get this on camera. After all that work, okay. Oh, one speck. Well, oh, two microfine specks. One speck and two microfine specks. I can't really see right there. Well, oh. one speck of gold uh, and two microfine flower poop size of gold. And I recovered all, basically all of my stuffer bottle, gold. So yeah, there you go. There's proof that it works. And just like any other gold processing equipment, nothing's 100% perfect, but yeah. Uh, we can catch, I'd say 99% of the gold, just like, you know, the gold cube doesn't catch 100% either. Hopefully it'll come with its own screen. And if not, depending on how much it's gonna cost me, you have to use your own screen, which is not a big deal. And like you see, when I was doing it just now with the bucket, it was a continuous operation. So if you bring your own bucket and, and classifier screen, you can just go to where your uh, material is, you know, classify it, and then take it down to the water and you can run through it with the spin pan really fast. Or you could just dig a big hole wherever you're digging your material, fill it with water. If you just happen to be near a creek, and you just dig a big hole, it'll naturally fill in with water. You don't have to go walking all the way up to the, to a part of the river where you can put your river sluice in, nothing like that. You can do this in a puddle. There you go. That's, uh, that's the uh, proof that my pan works. I 
even went through the tailings and I even showed you that it is not 100% perfect, but nothing is. Uh, one tiny speck out of thousands of little specks that were, that were in my snuffer bottle. I had thousands of little tiny little specks in my snuffer bottle and I lost one speck and two microfine specks. Um, so there you go. So I'm not trying to pull a fast one over you and uh, make it seem like it's, uh, you know, perfect, but uh, it just goes to show you that my device works and it's highly efficient. Yeah. I'll see you guys next video. And then on the next video, I'll have the next pan and I'll have the bracket ready too. So I'll have it completely ready to go, but the, the screen, the classifier screen will probably be round holes for the 3D printed version, but square holes for the mass produced injection molded version, because it's just, it's too much of a pain uh, for the 3D printer to, to, uh, to make square holes with the supports and how it's, how it's printed, it's just, a, it's just a pain. Yeah, so thanks for watching guys. Be sure to check out spinpan.com. Okay, see you in the next video.